uh, it's really the Fed rate path and the contraction of liquidity that the Fed has been executing over the course of the last several years. I mean, typically bull markets don't die, as we've often said of old age. They, they die often because rates rise at a rapid rate and contracts economic activity. We don't necessarily see that in the horizon. The Fed has been very careful, but uh, it's certainly one of the things we're watching quite closely. Uh, in terms of what you're concerned about, the, I mean, they, they have charted pretty clearly what they intend on doing. So does that path concern you, or is it that path that proceeds in spite of what is going on around the world, such as a tumult in the emerging markets or a sharp rise in the dollar, et cetera? Sure. We, we expect the Fed to be data-driven, uh, so to slow down if appropriate, if uh, economic indications uh, are, are, are such. But one of the things that we're, we're, I think, all wrestling with is the amount of liquidity that's been pumped into the system over the course of the last number of years. If you see what Fed uh, and, and central bank balance sheets have done, gone from four or five trillion to 15 trillion, that process is slowly reversing. And I think it's something we haven't seen before. So it's, it's, it's a, a degree of uncharted territory and liquidity has certainly pumped up lots of asset prices, particularly fixed income. JJ, what's your concern, if you have any? I'm sure you do. Well. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I, I do think the Fed is, is a bit of a worry. Actually, more inflation is a bit of a worry than anything else because we know that when it happens, it happens exponentially. Uh, as they really say, though, you know, every boxer will tell you the, the, the punch that knocks you out is the one you don't see coming. And so with that, I, I, I do worry. You know, we saw a little bit of a taste of this perhaps with Turkey two weeks ago. Uh, the, the European situation in terms of banking, you know, we do have Brexit on the horizon, et cetera. I, I'm actually a little bit more worried that if we see a slowdown worldwide, GDP in China slowing a little bit, not to a level yet that we have to be overly concerned. But th those are the things I think that worry me more than per perhaps inflation because even though, you know, we do have a lot of money in the system, et cetera, the pressure for pricing is just starting a little bit, as we saw with perhaps a Kimberly Clark last week, but I don't think it's widespread yet. So we've got the, the concerns out of the way. Joe, what's your general feeling on, on where we are in this market and, and how do you invest in light of sure. what your concern is? I think the uh, earnings picture is quite strong. So we certainly uh, experienced 20-22 uh, percent earnings growth in the first half of the year. The ex expectation for the full year is about that level of earnings growth. So earnings picture is quite uh, quite robust. The economic activity, while maybe peaking in the second quarter of this year from a U.S. economy standpoint, it's still moving along at a good pace. So, so certainly there are lots of positives that could push this and probably will push this market higher in the near term. Uh, the concerns that, that we have are uh, some of the things we talked about earlier in terms of where the rate path is. And, you know, there are other exogenous events that we're, that we're concerned about. I think uh, was meant, China was mentioned, which is one of the things that... Uh, what about Cohen? Hey, JJ, I'm going to do it to you because you're not here to throw something at me. Cohen and Manafort. I mean, th this uh, headline, you know, are you surprised the market is not reacting more to this? you got people that you know they're going to start talking about impeachment. They're going to start talking about campaign finance law breaking by, by the then candidate, now current president. Are you surprised the futures are not reacting more negatively to this news? Not, no, I'm not really, Brian. And, you know, you saw what the market really thinks of it last night. At one point, S&Ps were down more than 15 right after the news broke. They came back only down a couple of dollars earlier, now down about six. And so with that, what I, what I think it goes into, people have been calling for impeachment since the president was elected. And, you know, I think one of the traps, uh, particularly retail investors, fall into is they let their political views outweigh what the market's telling them. I see a VIX up 20 cents. Yeah, gold's rallied a little bit, but that, that might be as much the dollar as anything else. Bonds up just a little bit. The true warning signs that, oh, my God, you know, run for cover aren't there right now. And so with that, I would say there's been there's there's constant swirl. Earnings drive the markets. The earnings season has been fantastic. Not that other things can't change them. But right now, the market's not telling you that there's a huge warning signal out there. Of course, these situations tend to remain fluid. But I think people really have to separate their political ideology from what the market's actually telling them. And you have to remember, if, if you think back to 1998, 1999, we went through an impeachment proceeding with President Clinton. The market uh, was up uh, 20, 30 percent in those, in those uh, periods, obviously a very different time. Uh, but uh, a lot of the policy issues that I think are important for the economy, a significant tax cut for corporations and uh, significantly less deregulation or, or less regulation has really been important. So those things have been accomplished, and I think that's what the market's focused on. So in as much as this, this impacts the midterm elections in November, I mean, how does that alter or shape your market view? I mean, is the Trump agenda, is maintaining a majority in the House and the Senate, are those things important to your view of the market? 
I, I do think that the midterm elections and continued disarray in Washington uh, would be an issue that the market's going to try to, you know, sort of understand what the implications of that are. Gridlock historically has not necessarily been a bad thing because it avoids doing crazy things on the right and crazy things on the left. Uh, but we're, gonna, you know, that's certainly something that the market consensus today is that the Democrats are going to take the House. So I think the expectation is in there.